Good day everyone, Greg Satilla here from CRPG Legends and today we are entering the second zone of Shadowlands, the home of the Necrolords, Mel Draxus. If you remember from last time, Maldraxxus had just assaulted the Kyrian in Bastion and you had to help to thwart the attack. And now, you are on your way to Maldraxxus itself and its seven chapters. So let's begin! So you arrive in Maldraxxus at this large coliseum full of gladiators engaged in combat. You are told to grab a weapon and fight for your glory. But not much is expected because you look weak and probably won't last long. Uh, I still don't really understand what happens when you die once you're in the afterlife, but c'est la vie. I grab my weapon and I head into the fray and surprise surprise, you aren't that weak after all. You move from fighting grunts to elites to former champions impressing those watching you more and more as you proceed before finally earning your spot in the final event. After you win the event, Margrave Garmel, the head of the House of Constructs, emerges and asks which house you fight for since you have no banners. Margrave Sindane, the leader of the House of Rituals, recognizes you as the mortal whom thwarted the Bastion invasion attempt. This causes the leader of the House of the Chosen to speak up. Margrave Crexus accuses both Garmel and Sindane of treachery for attacking Bastion. The Necrolords are supposed to defend the Shadowlands, not attack them. He accuses them of betraying the will of the Primus, but they laugh it off, saying the Primus is long gone. Crexus attacks and I am caught in the middle, before Draca, Thrall's mother, flies in and pulls you out of the fray, stating that the House of the Chosen stands with you. Draca informs you that two of the five houses of Meldraxxus have fallen, engineered by the House of Constructs and the House of Rituals. We are then shown a video showcasing Draca and how when she arrived in the Shadowlands she was accepted into the House of Eyes and rose to the ranks of Baroness before her house and Margrave were destroyed and she was taken in by the House of the Chosen. My Lord! Chapter 1 is a great way to kick off the story to Meldraxxus. The arena is a very intense and memorable set piece in this expansion Everyone I have talked to about the game has mentioned it at some point. In a game like World of Warcraft, set pieces like this are important as it makes the world feel bigger than it really is. In Chapter 2, you are taken before Margrave Crexus at the House of the Chosen, and he wishes that you be put through the paces and help in whatever way you can. You are to report to Baron Vyraz. We are all that remain and stand in the way of the fall of Meldraxxus and the ideals of the Primus. Virus sends you to root out traitors with the help of a traitor sniffing dog and to deliver orders, one of which sends Secular Mevix marching out west with his troops to press the attack. You then report back to Draca. Draca asks you to perform a rite reserved for the most renowned Meldraxxi soldiers. Reaching a stone in the center of a lava pit in the center of the citadel. The Primus had left the stone as a challenge. When you reach the stone, you see a vision of the Primus and the stone breaks open, revealing an unfinished blade. You take this blade back to Draca and she informs you that it was forged by the Primus himself and you need to take it to his apprentice, Bonesmith Ermir. Ermir sends you to get material for a hilt, and she reforms the blade anew as you protect her from the souls that emerge from the blade. It turns out only you can wield the sword, and when you do, one of the runes on the sword lights up. You then take the completed sword before Margrave Crexus. You learn the Primus embodied the five traits of the Meldraxi clans, and that for those five traits there are five runes on the sword that coincide with the same five runes on the door sealed at the seat of the Primus. You are to take your sword before it and see what happens. 
When you approach with your sword, the same rune that is a light on your sword lights up on the sealed door. It appears you have the key to the sealed door. Draca next sends you to investigate the fallen house of plagues. When you arrive, you find plague divisor Marileth, who seems to have gone somewhat insane, mistaking you for his apprentice. He says that Margrave Stradama awaits a new potion and he helps us create a sentient slime to help gather the tools necessary for the laboratory. I must also defeat Margrave Sindane's spy, Corin the Cunning. Along the way, you find pages from Merilith's old journal from before he went crazy. He believed with the Primus gone, civil war was on the horizon. That without anima, their power would stagnate. The House of Ritual said they could provide anima, but Merileth suspects duplicity. He needs to craft a potion to protect Stradama if the need arises and you help find the last of those ingredients. With the potion ready, you summon Stradama. She refuses to take the potion. She has been transformed into some sort of slime monstrosity and tells you to endure. I am then contacted once again by the Primus and the second rune lights up on my blade. Next, I am sent to meet with the other Baroness from Draca's former clan, the House of Eyes. It turns out to be Baroness Vash, whom we remember defeating in Serpent Shrine Cavern long ago in the Burning Crusade. She is upset that Draca abandoned their cause and now makes demands from another house, but she agrees to respond if you help her complete her task. She is looking to defeat the Lich Morbitten, and to do that we must first capture his second-in-command, Mephiles the Loyal, and interrogate him. I return with Mephiles and we tear the memories from his mind, killing him in the process and learning that more bitten is to complete a ritual for his new barons. So we decide to prepare a trap for more bitten. You gather some tainted cores, steal the ritual plans from some necromancers and gather runes of binding which we use to set up the fake ritual and lure out more bitten. Once you defeat him, the next rune on your blade lights up. This gives Vash new hope, and she goes to meet Draca at the seat of the Primus. You next head to the Western Front to help Baron Virez and Secular Mevix. You go to lend support to the troops, and gain back the high ground for our forces from the enemy commander, General Elver. You are able to defeat Elver, but Mevix warns we need more men before you push forward with an assault. Baron Virez seems to think our time of victory is at hand and demands we push forward, but we fail. Secular Mevix believes we still have a chance and devises a plan where he creates a diversion and I play dead and get rounded up with the rest of the corpses. This seems to work as he is captured and I am brought inside with the rest of the corpses. When I am dumped with the bodies, I find I am not the only one left alive among the corpses as Kyrian aspirant Talas was also dumped with the bodies after he had his eyes horribly burned out. The traitorous Maldraxxi have been collecting Kyrian and their corpses for experiments. With Talis' help, we are able to eliminate Dr. Hivil, Tabulator Hameris, and Leech Receiven, slowing down the torturous experiments on the Kyrian. We rescue some of our friends, including Secular Mevix, and try to make our escape, avoiding the Baron Halus. But we are blocked by a soul barrier and vile spewers. With the help of one of the Curian servants, we pilot a Praetor past the barrier and make a way for us to escape, but we need to defeat Sherix the Fleshcrafter and First Apprentice Melkrix, who have been working on a soul-fused construct, a mixture of Curian souls and monstrous bodies. After their defeat, Mevix wants to destroy the soul-fused construct, but Talus says he can feel the Kyrian within, and he can calm them and allow us to use the construct ourselves, allowing us to escape, killing Baron Halus, and wreaking destruction upon the House of Constructs as we leave, gaining the fourth of the runes upon escape. 
You return to the House of the Chosen to report in with Margrave Crexus, only to find himself and the entire place slaughtered. Baron Virez says we need our strength right now, not the seed of the Primus. He wants me to retrieve the former Baron that preceded Draca from the Maw. You must go to speak to Bolvar in Ouroboros. Bolvar tells me to seek out the help of Darien Mograine in the Maw, using one of the amulets of the Four Horsemen. They should be able to help me locate this Baron. When you arrive in the Maw, the amulet does not work, so you must charge it with the souls in Vzavl's cauldron. Once charged, the medallion locates an unconscious locked up Darien Mograine, and in order to unlock him, we must retrieve the key from his captor. Once we have the key, we are aided by Venari, who exchanges the amulet I have for information on the Baron's location. Venari leads us there, where we find the Baron is Alexandros Mograine, the father of Darien. We defeat his captor, Deslin the Torturer, and escape. Venari teaches you how to take souls out of the Maw with you, and you take Darien and Alexandros with you back to Ouroboros. Here, Alexandros informs you that Baron Virez is the real traitor. He was the one that had him sent to the Maw and likely intended for us to be trapped there when we went again and diverted our attention from the seat of the Primus. This gives you the final rune on your blade and you head back to confront Virez, but mid-fight Draca swoops in and picks you up and taking you to the seat of the Primus which is now under attack. I open the seat of the Primus and it repels the forces of Virez and the traitorous Maldraxi. Inside we learn that the Jailer was a Necrolord that was banished to become the Jailer and it must be him that brought upon the end of the Primus. The Eternal Ones must stand together before the Jailer escapes. I must tell the Archon, the Winter Queen and the Sire and we must protect the Arbiter. I head back once again to Orbos. There, Bolvar is pressed by his daughter and others to search to see if our friends are still alive. Bolvar uses the helmet of the Lich King to find Thrall and Jaina still alive, but nothing on Anduin and Bane. We also learn that the Jailer has little concern over what we have discovered so far. The next journey for me is to head to Ardenweald and inform the Winter Queen. And that's where we'll pick up next time. We will be exploring the story of Ardenweald and what happens in that zone and how it rounds out the story. So stay tuned for next time, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.